the worst advice ever for a home stager. There is so much bad advice going around from so-called business gurus who've only ever got one client. I've got a seven figure business and take it from me, I've even made some of the mistakes that other people are advertising that you should do whilst trying to grow your home staging business. So I've got five pieces of advice you should not take from other people. Let's dive in. When I first started my business, I was 16 years old. I didn't have a business mentor or coach. I didn't know anyone that was running a home staging business. This was now seven years ago. And I implemented some of these things into my business totally blindly and then had to learn the hard way, which was usually expensive and also quite heartbreaking at the time too. But that's why I wanna be here with you today because I wanna help you avoid the mistakes that I've made and that other people are telling you to do and actually help accelerate your journey and growing your home staging business because ultimately that's what we want. Number one, offer every single service. Now there's multiple different types of services you can offer in your home staging business. However, I'm a massive believer you know, jack of all trades, master of none. And in my business, I didn't actually start to offer other services out with staging properties for sale until about two years into my journey. The reason behind that was, is that I wanted to be known for one thing. Also, seven years ago, the industry was in its infancy and not a lot of people knew what home staging actually was. So it was a big enough challenge to put it on the map Never mind then start saying, and I offer 500 other services too. Now there's lots of services, as I mentioned, there's actually four services in your home staging business you can offer. And I would say master one until you are the go-to person in your area for that specific service. But the advice I also hear flying around is about, well, if a client asks, do you sell washing machines and you don't, just say yes and then get them a washing machine. If they need a handyman, you can source that. If they need blinds, if they need all of these different services, why don't you just provide them that whole one-stop shop? Uh-uh, <laughs> let's not go there. Because when we start to, number one, offer all those services, even if we're outsourcing them, we put ourselves at a higher risk if we're relying on someone we don't really know or don't really trust with our client. At the end of the day, that's only going to come back on your business and your reputation. So stick to with one service till you're the master and you're the go-to expert in your area. Secondly, my pet peeve is when people say, don't put your pricing online. I believe the absolute opposite. Plaster your pricing online. A little bit of a disclaimer here, you can add from £2,000 from X thousand dollars, but have an idea, a guide price on that. Now, I always like refer to this when I'm thinking about online clothes shopping. I could be on, you know, a website and love everything that's on the website, right? It could be, I want every single piece, I want to buy it all. But it's a much bigger purchasing decision to buy a $900 dress than like a $20 dress. And I might be looking at things that I just can't afford and I just can't have. And that's often the same when it comes to home staging because a lot of people don't actually know the cost. It's not something that is widely known that to stage a four bedroom property, it could cost X. So I personally believe having your prices on your website basically gives your client clarity. And if it is affordable for them, they will get in contact for a more specific and bespoke quote. Now, what I don't like about hiding your prices is that I used to do that. I used to not have my prices on my website. Now, what this resulted in was people phoning up the business, us quoting them 5,000, and they genuinely thought it was gonna be about 500. So we were getting on phone calls, with a lower success rate because we weren't speaking to qualified buyers. And that's what placing your price on your website does. It makes sure that the buyer is qualified. 
So I always think of this, if I get on a call with 50 unqualified buyers and I convert at 10%, then I have five buyers. I've had 45 no's at that point. I've had 45 rejections. And I don't know about you, but that <laughs> is a little bit disheartening. Now, if I get on a call with, let's say, I don't know, five qualified buyers, I'm probably gonna convert at a much higher percentage, maybe even 100% because they're getting on the call knowing the price, then I've got a much higher success rate. I have not wasted lots of my time. And I've also, my mindset hasn't gone you know, more negative because I've not had so much rejection. So put your prices on your website. It creates so much more clarity. It saves you so much time. And yeah, keeps you going. It makes you not want to give up. If you're enjoying some of this hard hitting content, you know I do not sugarcoat things, then go and comment below and let me know what's the worst piece of advice you've ever been given in business. Put it in the comments, I read them all. I cannot wait to hear. Number three could be the downfall of your business and this is not taking payments up front. Please do the opposite, take the payment up front. Guys, this has been a number one rule pretty much since day one in my business because I had to build the business from zero, so I needed the payment up front to actually carry out the installation. Now, the one time I didn't take the payment up front and I took it in stages throughout the project, it didn't go too well. Our client became hostile. It was an £80,000 installation. And right at the end, they threatened not to pay us. That was a massive panic moment for my business, which actually, you know, could have been quite destructful to our progress and our growth. Fortunately, we got paid in the end. And now I'm not telling you this story to try and scare you. Look, that has never happened before, apart from that one install, because I take the payment up front. When you take the payment up front, you're protecting yourself. Usually we're putting in furniture that's worth more than the payment that we're actually receiving. So I think it's more security for us as homestagers. Also on that, if you take payment at the end, after the installation, it's just an excuse for your client to potentially bring up things that they're not pleased with. Like, I don't like that cushion. I'm not gonna pay you thousands of dollars. So make sure that you're taking that payment up front. And if you're worried about having that conversation, my opinion always is, why are they not happy to pay up front? And if I get that bad gut feeling, then I know they're not my ideal client. And I know that it may go negatively in the end. Number four, you'll be delighted to hear, is you do not have to go meet every single client and view every single property. Guys, we stage over 400 properties per year and not one of my team members step foot in that property until we've been paid to stage it. Now, when you're starting out, you may want to go and build those in-person connections. However, I don't 100% see that it's necessary. Very early on in my business, I was wearing all the hats. I was staging the properties. I was lifting the furniture at times. I was taking the client calls. I actually just didn't have time. And it was impossible for me to view the properties because one day I was in London, someone would phone me in Glasgow and want me to view their property. And I would literally start to quote just from the images. So do not think that you need to go and make those in-person connections and see the properties to build a seven-figure business. We don't step into any properties and we haven't in the last five years. So take it from us, it's possible. Just get photos and quote from there. Number five and what could be the biggest headache is giving your client input into the staging. I have been here, please refrain and have this completely clear in your contract. You are not staging the property for the client who's paying you. You're staging the property for the end user, the person that's gonna come in, they're gonna view the home and they're going to want to purchase it. Meaning that your client does not have to have their own personal taste in that property. It's why they are hiring you for your expertise and your style and your look. So being very clear up front with this is so key. I have, again, been quite lackadaisical with this rule and I've had clients want me to drive two hours to change a piece of artwork because they don't like the colour green. So guys be very strict with this one because all you will do is cost your business money and take away from that bottom line. So don't give your clients input, put it into the contract and just manage that conversation in a friendly way. 
So if you've been loving hearing about all the things that not to do, then I have a free 90 minute training at becomeastageyourboss.com and I share all the things you should do guys. So head to becomeastageyourboss.com. I'm teaching you how to build a successful seven figure home staging business and I will not be giving you any bad advice, all good advice and I'll see you there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry.